Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Wisdom 365, wisdom for every day of our lives. And today, my friend, we are ending chapter nine of the book of Proverbs, and we will be studying and reading from verses 10 through 18 as we um, end our study of chapter nine of Proverbs. So first, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord God. Thank you that you have met so many of our needs, my Father. Thank you that you continue to meet each and every need every single day of our lives. My Father, as long as we are connected to you, connected to the vine, my Father, we will never go wrong. We will never do wrong, my Father, because truly to be connected to you is to be satisfied. It is to be a little bit holier every single day. It is to be in your image and your likeness, Lord God. And so, my Father, we rejoice. We are grateful. We are thankful, my Father, for everything that you give us every single day, who you are, how you allow us to know you, God. What a privilege. What an honor to know wisdom and to know you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father, in your Son's name, O God. Thank you, Lord. So my friend, today we are on Proverbs 9, verses 10 through 18, and it reads, The beginning and the benefits of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself, and if you scoff, you will bear it alone. And it continues, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knows nothing, for she sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city to call to those who pass by who go straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And as for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, stolen water is sweet and bread is eaten in secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of hell. So here, the verses and the Lord is saying the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It truly is. When we honor God, when we are in awe of God, what he does, what he says, when we follow the laws of God and the precepts of God, when we follow the life plan that God has set before us, That is the fear of the Lord. And it is really not a fear that we're terrified. It is a fear of reverence and awe and honor and of respect. And so if you're following the Lord, then you're obeying everything that he says for us to do. And even if it goes against our flesh, even if it goes against the pleasantness that our flesh requires, the comfort that our flesh requires, If it goes against the flesh, then we are truly pleasing the Lord. Unfortunately, the flesh and the spirit have nothing to do with one another. What does light have to do against darkness? One opposes the other constantly. So here it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Truly, understanding knowledge, wisdom, revelation, all come from the source, the source, which is the source of love, the source of light, the source of creation, the source of humanity, the source that holds this planet together and humans that we don't basically eat each other is the mercies and the compassions, the love and the forgiveness of God. It is the love of God that is basically holding this earth together. It is the Lord Jesus that is holding this earth together. And so the knowledge of God is truly understanding. 
for it says that wisdom that when you attain, when you look for wisdom, your days will be multiplied and your years will be added on to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. In other words, if you are wise, you will have reverence for the Lord. If you are wise, you will have respect and reverence and awe and be enamored by the things of God. But if you scoff, if you criticize, if you make fun of God, then you're going to bear it alone because there is a consequence to our actions. There is a consequence to our words. There's a consequence, my friend, that we all have to endure. In other words, whatever we did on earth, whatever we do here, we are, we ask forgiveness by, from God and we will receive by God that forgiveness. But there will still be consequences that m must be paid. And the grace of God and the mercy of God are there for us, that we will be protected, we will be, um, we will be um, held together, we will be sustained, in other words, through the trial and through whatever the learning process is, because for every action there is a reaction and every cause there is a consequence because of, of that's the, the laws of God. So we will be forgiven. We are forgiven by the Lord and by his grace, by his grace and his mercies, we are not punished or we are not we will not go through things that really are really, really hard and they are uh, basic consequences to our actions. And by the grace of God, when we submit to God, things will go better with, for us. They really will. And so the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom is to understand that we have done wrong. The beginning of wisdom is to understand what our sins are. And what have we done? What has been done to us? And what have we done? Because not everyone is a victim of their circumstances. There are victims and then there are aggressors. And we need to understand who we are. Are we a victim? Are we an aggressor? Or are sometimes we may be both, but we have to be realistic about who we are. The beginning of wisdom it has a starting place and the rec and it, the starting place is the recognition and the honor that we have of god and that that means that those who do not recognize or honor god fall short of true wisdom in some way or another every morning we start fresh every task that we take up has a new start every venture in joy or in effort must have a beginning then let every beginning be in the fear of the lord the fear of jehovah that is wisdom and it leads in the way of wisdom so by my by me your days will be multiplied by me wisdom is speaking uh, wisdom is speaking through solomon as he is advising his son when you attain wisdom your days will be multiplied because bring, wisdom brings benefits to those who receive her. And finding wisdom starts through the fear of the Lord. And whoever fears the Lord will be rewarded. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. Solomon explained how wisdom and folly directly affect the individual. Sometimes we seek wisdom more for others than ourselves. And Solomon reminded us that wisdom is for ourselves and the scoffer will never gain wisdom. They will never gain wisdom unless they surrender to the Lord, unless they ask for forgiveness, and unless they renew their mind by the power of the word. And when he is foolish, he will bear it alone, because there will come a day when the fools and the scoffers will have to pay the price of embarrassment and of shame. Unfortunately, that is the way it is. And perhaps there is something that we need to bring to the Lord today. Are we, are we having a reverence for the Lord or are we scoffing at the Lord? Are we turning our backs to the Lord? Are we, when we are in certain groups, we 
go and we endure and we follow along when people speak of God and mock God. When we are with another group, we may be serious about God. And so we need to know who we are regarding the subject of God. And we need to believe God and trust in God and see him who, for who he is. He is the genuine the genuine God that is good and that is merciful and that is forgiving and kind. He is the creator. He is the intelligent design behind the creation of the world and the creation of human beings. And there is nothing that can withstand or nothing that can compare or even compete with God because there is nothing created by man that, that can ever compete with the creator ever never and so um this is the way the way of folly is the other side to this uh proverbs 9 um verses 10 through 18 now we're on verses 13 and 15 13 through 15 and it reads a foolish woman is clamorous she is simple and knows nothing for she sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city to call those who pass by who go straight on their way a foolish woman is clamorous Clamorous, using a symbolic figure, Solomon now presented the foolish way that rejects wisdom. Wisdom is like a gracious woman offering generous hospitality. Folly is like a clamorous, unpleasant woman, one who is simple and knows nothing, looking for friends that know nothing with her. And she sits at the door of her house. Foolishness can be found in the home of a foolish woman. But also in the highest places of the city. Wisdom works hard to make a wonderful meal and offer impressive hospitality. Folly sits at the door and makes her call to those who pass by. In other words, folly, mocking, a woman that is unwise or a man that is unwise, he will call others to do the unwise things, the foolish things with him. And so we are called to seek the understanding, to seek and to understand God that when he says stolen water is sweet, sto the stolen woman, the stolen man, the stolen whatever you steal that could be a um, entertainment that it could be a pleasure whatever does not belong to you that you steal it to gain pleasure it may be sweet for a moment but that moment it is so trivial and it's so fleeting and so passing that you will not even know what hit you you can end you can go into depression you can go into paying consequences right away with your children with your family with embarrassment with the the husband or of or the wife of the person that you're with that does not belong to you and so it says and the bread eaten in secret is pleasant how much do we do in secrecy pornography, drug addiction, food addiction, gambling. How much do we do in secrecy? Promiscuous sex, dirty sex, everything that is that bread that is eaten in secret is, is the pleasantness that it promises, which is total counterfeit. The stuff that we do in secret, how much is it really pleasant? And how many things do we do in secret? Because everything that is a sin, we do in secret, right? We don't do sin out publicly or in the light or in the sunshine. We always go to the dark places. We always hide. We hide because we know that it is wrong. We know that it is a sin. We know that it goes against the laws of God. And yet we do it in the dark. So I encourage you today, that everything that may be in the dark in your life, bring it to the light. Like I always say at the end of the broadcast, play in the light, play in the sunshine, bring it to the light. Everything that you bring to the light has no longer has any power over you. Anything that is in the darkness, you allow that thing to torment you. You allow the enemy of your soul to use it against you.
and he will. So bring everything to the light, bring it before the Lord, before the light of the Lord, the light of his eyes, and whatever you need to change, change it. Whatever you need to repent of, repent and go and walk the straight line, the narrow path. Stay on your lane. Whatever is not yours, do not take it. Whatever is yours, take care of it and love it. And so I um, encourage you like always to seek a better path. Seek the path of wisdom and you're never going to go wrong. Wisdom has rewards and wisdom has honors. It will honor you. Thank you, O oh God, for the end of this chapter nine. It has been awesome. Thank you so much for everything that we are learning from you, my father. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for your grace, my God. Thank you for your amazing love. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you so much. My friend, thank you so much for coming out here every day and listening to this broadcast, coming to um, Wisdom 365 and, and meeting us here every single day. And, and I pray that you gain wisdom every day of your life by reading the Word of God and listening to these messages, which I, I do with, uh, with so much love for all of you. But mostly I do it with so much love for my Father in heaven. I am so grateful. I, am so, I have so much gratitude that um, there, is no, there is nothing that I could do to pay back my Lord for uh, transforming me and healing my life. And I am so deeply grateful for everything that the Lord has done in my life. Um, I, I encourage you to buy the book that I wrote. It's called The Girl with the Loca Dress. It's my life story. And there, if you want to know more about God, I encourage you to order it today. It's on Amazon. You can get the book, you can get the audio. And uh, the audio is in Spanish, um, but you can get the book or the ebook and read everything that the Lord has done for me and why I am so grateful. Uh, really, it was, uh, it was really a miracle. And so um, I encourage you, I, re I remind you to play in the light and play in the sunshine and dance in the rain. But most of all, I remind you to keep on smiling. Why should you smile? Because God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again, have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God, and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy. I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior. How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy and yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. 
make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.